Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More. We're back with another real estate video. Today we're talking about the housing market. Is it slowing down? There's a lot of people out there I see on social media, all over the place saying the market's slowing down, inventory's increasing, prices aren't going up as high, and I wanna look at some of the data and tell you what I think, if I think that's true or not. Now, along with that, I'm also gonna show you houses we are currently selling. So we do a lot of flips. I think I've sold 214 flips now. We do from 15 to 25 flips a year. We actually have listed or sold five flips in the last few weeks. So we're gonna go through those flips and show you what's currently happening in our market in Colorado, if things are slowing down, if it's getting less crazy or not. And I also sold a rental too. So we'll show you that one as well. Now, along with that, people are always telling me, oh, you can't get good deals. It's impossible to get a good deal in this market right now. Well, uh, we have a few properties under contract to buy as well. I will show those too and show you how we're getting good deals in a good market. So yes, the market can go up. Yes, you can still get good deals. And even though it has been an absolutely crazy market and just absolutely insane, which we'll show you all those numbers, that doesn't mean that a market slowdown or change equals a crash or a downturn. Things have been so crazy that a slowdown in the market simply means prices don't go up as fast as they have been going up. And we'll show you how fast they have been going up, especially in Colorado. But it just means things slow down. Maybe we return to a more normal market. But we could have significant changes in inventory, um, house price increases, and still have prices going up. So we'll talk about all of that. Of course, we love it. If you like our videos, please hit the like button now. We love it when you leave comments. And we have tons more information on investmore.com articles on flipping, rentals, being an agent, wholesaling, buying a house, all kinds of great stuff, and a free book on there too, so please check that out. And let's take a look at some of my houses right now and see what they're doing. First off, I wanted to show some properties we have under contract that we're buying. Uh, there's this big misconception that because real estate prices are high, people are paying more than asking price, that that means everybody's doing that. That's the only way to buy houses. It's impossible to get deals. That is not the case. We are still buying properties. We haven't bought as many flips as we'd like to this year, but we still bought five. We have under 200 contract to buy, um, and they've been really good flips. So here's one right here that we have under contract to buy uh, next week, I believe, um, or the week after, the week after. Under contract for, well, the list price is 475. We're buying it below that. I will disclose it once we purchase it. And if you subscribe, of course, you'll get notified once we buy that property and can show you all of it. Uh, this property is probably worth $625,000 once it's fixed up. It's on two and a half acres, a big property, um, really good deal. Needs some work, obviously, but they had dropped the price a few times and we saw it and then we're able to um, get a pretty good deal on it. So that's one that should be fantastic and was on the MLS available for just about anybody to buy. So that's a cool one we'll be showing. This is another one that's on the MLS for anyone to buy. An eight plex with eight two car garages, eight one car garages, and 12 storage units. Again, we got this for less than asking price too. We'll disclose that once we buy it as well. I think we're buying that in September, so a little farther out. We'll have videos of it as well. So we're able to get a pretty darn good deal on that too. I think it's worth more than list price right now. You know, that sounds weird. I'll tell you why once we buy it and go through that. And then this is one um, we have under contract. It's a wholesale deal, right? It's not listed. It's because of a wholesaler we know. And that's how we got this deal. And that will be a good flip as well. And we'll of course show that once we buy that, which will be again, I think in 10 days or so, we're buying this one. We'll have videos of it up. So you can get good deals in today's market. Yes, it's difficult. They're not just sitting around for anybody to buy. And even back in 2012, 2011, 2010, I was buying rental properties, I was buying flips back then too, right? There weren't just thousands of deals sitting around for anyone to buy. It wasn't easy back then. There are still investors, there are still people buying properties then too. It was just prices were much lower back then. And we didn't really know prices were gonna skyrocket like they did. Um, so it's all relative, you know, the prices were lower, purchase prices were lower, the margins weren't crazy high. We actually have higher margins now in some of the flips we're buying than we did back then. And it just takes, yeah, some more work. It took work back then too. Um, 
So this misconception is impossible to get a deal is just not true at all. So now we'll look at some of the properties we are buying, or sorry, are selling, and what those prices have done. Now I'm going to go through some of the properties we're selling and have under contract and talk about uh, how it went. <laughs> so like I said, we have five properties that are selling or have, will sell in July and one that is set to close in August as well. So we list these properties, they're repaired, they're house flips, they're in pretty good shape. They're tough to get good deals on because I'm an investor, I want top dollar. Right, some of the properties we just showed you that we're buying, maybe they need work, the sellers want to sell fast, they're the ones we can usually get the deal on. So here's one um, we listed for $395. I think we bought this for $295 from the MLS, so I earned a commission as well. Uh, went under contract in three days. We had multiple offers on it. I think we had two offers, if I remember right. Both over list price. We took the best one, the cleanest one. It is selling for more than list price. Multiple offers the first day. Uh, the next one, this one I think we bought for $218 a while ago. We just showed a video on this one if you haven't seen it. Uh, I had an agent who was asking me to buy this for months <laughs> before we listed it. We tend not to do that. I like to list my properties first, get them full market exposure, and not sell them before they're listed. But as soon as we listed it, uh, we got an offer from that agent, full price. They even offered to go higher because we took slightly longer accepting it than they wanted but um, we still stuck with that so that one at or above full price first day offer this one another one that took us a little longer than we liked but listed this on the market multiple offers first day or two we had one offer that was way 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 above list and then they canceled um, because of lender issues. We're not sure exactly what happened, but it came back on the market. Now, in the past, in a normal market, when you list a property, it goes under contract and the buyers cancel and it comes back on the market, you almost always sell it for less money than list price. It, it, it just doesn't sell for as much as a first offer in most cases. Now, this one came back on the market. As soon as it came back on the market, multiple offers, again, above list price. It was so, it was pretty crazy. Um, that just did not happen. Mallard, this is the rental property number seven I just sold. As you can see, we listed for $369.9, sold for $370. Um, this one took, I want to say, look at that, 13 days to offer. Can you believe that? It almost took two weeks for us to sell it. This market is horrible. It's crashing. No, <laughs> um, we still got an offer. It took a little longer, but in a normal market, we would usually expect it to take three weeks to get an offer, and then you would never expect it to be over list price, which this one still was, even though it was a little bit. But um, again, sold pretty quickly, over list price, um, all of these very recently. This one just sold as well. Again, you can see, here we go. <laughs> list price, 369.9, sold for 382. Uh, I think we had multiple offers on this one as well. Um, this shows the days to offer. That's what the DTO is, is nine days. That's usually, but it's not exactly how long it took to get the offer. It's how long it took to go under contract. So we might get the offers, you know, at six days or five days, and then we're countering back and forth, or we're giving everybody a few days to get their offers in. So I think it took us, it wasn't the first day, but within the first week, we had multiple offers on this one, then took a couple days negotiating or, you know, figuring out what offer to take. Took an offer over list price again, and it just sold. And here is Rancho, the foundation house, the horrible foundation house. I have lots and lots of videos of, on, on this. Um, this one shows 13 days um, to offer, but this also went under contract, fell apart, came back on the market. So we listed it at 499. We got an offer right away. I think it was at list price, and um, we accepted it. And then the buyers. Two days later, canceled. They didn't tell us why. They just canceled it. Put it back in the market. Boom. Got another offer for more than the first one for 510 above list price. Sold. So looking at our properties and the ones that are in good shape and putting them on the market, we are seeing no market slowdown. Uh, 
sure, they're not selling for fifty or hundred thousand dollars over list price, but I've never really seen that in my market for the properties that we've sold. Maybe for more expensive properties, maybe in more urban areas with even less properties for sale and more buyers. But around here, the market is not slowing down. It does not seem to be changing. It seems to be almost the same as it has been all year long, which is very strong. Um, lots of buyers, very few sellers. Houses selling very, very quickly. Now, something else I wanna show, obviously, is these are just my properties, right? I wanna show more national numbers and state numbers for everything on what's going on. And also, kind of how prices tend to jump in our area. They aren't always like a slope going up. It's more like a staircase where they jump up, they level out, jump up, level out, and we'll show that to you here too. Here's a really cool graph about median sales prices in Colorado. So this is just Colorado, but it shows us back to 2011 to now what the median sales price has done. And so I want to show a few things. Um, first off, you can see stuff was pretty stable for a while. Um, even though back here is when inventory really dropped, right? There's still very few houses for sale, but prices didn't jump until I think people realized, man, I don't think that it's going to get any better. There's not going to be more prices or more houses. So prices started going up. But the thing I want to show you is one, yes, we had a huge jump here in 2021. Um, do not see that very often. Again, caused by all kinds of different factors, very little building. People stopped selling their houses. So there's less inventory uh, and buyers still wanted to buy. So if you're just judging from this big jump, yes, the housing market is probably going to slow down because it cannot just keep, you know, shooting up that high. But in the past, while they weren't as high as that, we've still had these pretty big jumps and you kind of see them at the start of the year and then it kind of levels off or even drops a little at the end of the year. And almost every year we have the same trend. As you can see, that one kept going up a little higher. We have these pretty big jumps and then a leveling off. And so it is not out of the ordinary to have this jump and then a level off or even a slight drop. And I just don't want people to freak out and think, oh, look at this, the housing market's gonna crash. We had this big jump, leveled off, it dropped, oh no. <laughs> and so I think some people are saying, right, we're seeing the start of the doom and gloom and the housing crash because things are leveling off or dropping. That's perfectly normal. And this is what I meant by the staircase effect that I see in the housing market, not a slope. It's not like a straight linear slope. You see a jump, you see level off, even a drop, a jump, level off, even a drop. And that's how it's kind of been ever since the housing crash is you'll get these jumps where prices just jump up and they'll kind of level off and jump up. So don't be surprised. We could definitely level off, maybe even drop some, but that doesn't indicate a crash or that a major change is happening in the market. It's really part of the natural cycle. Here's another interesting chart that shows us median days of the market again for Colorado. Uh, this is back in 2011, 2012. This is kind of the, the bottom of the market. You can see it took 100 to 120 days for a house to sell. Now, prices have pretty much been increasing this entire time. And you can see, even while prices were increasing over here, you still had 60, 80, 60, 70 days on the market. And then for the last, oh, what is that? Four or five years, really steady from 50 to 70 days on the market average. And that was really, really low historically. And then 2020, 2021, <laughs> things went crazy. I don't know why there's this giant jump there, but down to five, six days on market, just absolute craziness. And that's what's kind of caused these giant prices to jump. But again, if days on market go back to normal, it takes three weeks to get an offer, sometimes longer. So again, going back to normal isn't a bad thing. It doesn't indicate a crash, but um, it could definitely stabilize things a little bit. And um, yeah, it's a good thing sometimes to not be in this crazy, ridiculous five day market. <laughs> Here's another chart, months of supply of inventory. So this tells us how many months of supply there are on the MLS. So if it's a three month supply, that means it would take three months for all the houses currently on the MLS to sell based on days on market and all that. So here again, you can see this went down, went down, jumped back up again. Um, we didn't see any big price drops or anything obviously here, but then lower, lower, and then crazy low again here. 
half a month's supply, which is ridiculous. We've never seen that before. So that's why we're seeing these crazy jumps in prices. But again, this whole time when we had two, three months supply of properties, prices were going up. So if we jump up to two or three supply month of listings or even three or four, prices still could go up even with those numbers. So yes, it's absolutely crazy right now, but going from crazy to normal doesn't mean a crash is coming or even the prices will drop. They just might slow down their increase. So here is uh, the Fred St. Louis bank chart. I think I might have said Zillow before, but this is what I meant. Actually, not Zillow. Uh, Zillow used to have tons of great data. Now it's kind of harder to find, but they still have some good data. But Fred has some amazing data if you ever want to see charts. So this shows housing inventory, active listing count in the United States. So in July of 16, there were 1.5 some million houses. Pretty steady from 1.2 to 1.4. All the while, prices are going up. Don't forget, prices didn't just start going up after COVID. They were going up before for many, many years. But then they dropped, even before coronavirus, they dropped significantly, which is kind of interesting. I actually had not seen that before. So I'm not sure why that is. But then normally, right, you have this natural up and down. There was no up, <laughs> right? When coronavirus hit, people stop listing their houses but people still want to buy them and we had this massive 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 drop and then when you hear people say oh inventory is going up things are changing this is what they're talking about that little tiny increase right there so again even if we go all the way back up to here which would double the current inventory on the market we're still at a place where prices are probably going to increase so Again, is the market changing? Yes, the market's always changing. Is it slowing down? Yes, it could be slowing down, which it has to do because it can't go at this astronomical pace forever. But a slowdown does not mean prices will drop. It doesn't even mean prices will stay steady. I mean, they could still be going up, just not as fast as they were in 2021. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think below. We love it when you like the videos too. That helps us out. And then um what do i think right what do i personally think i've been doing this for almost 20 years now been through the last crash have lots of different videos on my current opinion on the housing market as well beyond this one about the housing crash with tons of information on supply demand lending tactics all that so you can search for invest for more in housing crash or i'll link to it below another video on interest rates and how they might affect things another video on affordability if it's really as bad as people say it is but my personal gut I try not to predict things. We always invest things, invest in properties based on today's prices, today's rents. We don't think they're gonna go up. We don't base our investing on that, but we also wanna prepare in case things do go down too. So I like to hope for the best, plan for the worst. <laughs> um, we always get really good deals. We're always thinking, hey, if things go down, will we be okay? Will we be protected? And that's how we invest. So that doesn't mean I think things are gonna go down. That's just how I invest in every market, good, bad, normal, whatever it is, that's how I invest. My personal opinion is that we could see a slowdown, but not a significant one, not a crash. And by slowdown, I mean prices don't go up as fast as they are now. They just like go up at a slower rate because there's still not enough houses. There's not enough building. There's just not enough supply for the demand that is out there. So let me know what you think. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I'm okay with that. Although I might argue with you, just be prepared for that. So, <laughs> all right, thanks for watching again. Check out investformore.com. We also have tons of books on Amazon and we'll be back with much more videos on topics like this and actually showing our properties, our flips, our rentals and other cool properties too.